In today's video, I'm gonna share some insight into how I was able to uh, find resources to help me as an independent consultant or a freelance consultant. What this is, is the fact that in the Salesforce ecosystem, you're never going to know everything. And as an independent consultant, that can be scary. If you're not a developer, how are you gonna do developer things? If you don't know CPQ, what if your client needs CPQ help? What if you need marketing cloud or Pardot or any type of marketing automation help? There are so many different avenues to Salesforce, so many you know niche uh, pieces and corners of the platform that you can't possibly know everything. So as an independent consultant, we have to know where to find our resources and really more importantly, when to start looking for those resources. In today's video, I'll be speaking to Rachel, one of our top Salesforce freelancers in our freelance course, and talking to her a little bit about strategy around this. So this is a very uh, unscripted conversation. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think in the comments below. There are some things that I feel like I could be able to help deliver for a client, but I am a declarative uh, solutions expert, right? Yeah, I yeah. do not do coding, you know, and I really don't have an interest in doing it mm -hmm. at this time. But I can visualize how it needs to be done. I can visualize it. I can do the, you know, I know how Hard it needs to, to be that. done. Mm -hmm. I just need somebody that knows how to do it. Right. Yeah. And, and that's what makes you the solution. You're like the solution architect. Like, yes. I, and so, so you can design these solutions, you know, logically how they should function. Yes. Um, but you just need somebody to write the actual code. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that part, I, what I'm really interested in is just really, is there like a pool of people like in our community that are like really open into working with other consultants, like to kind of kind of create like this sort of in homegrown, you know, mm -hmm. network without you feeling like you have to hire somebody, you know, I yeah. don't, I don't feel like I'm in a position right now to hire somebody, but I would like to be able to say, Hey, Jack, I have got this solution here that I think you might be perfect for, or I just want to run something by you. Does this even yeah. make sense to do this? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at on that topic resources. So, um, I'm a pretty frugal person. Um, yeah. that's why you'll notice, like I've basically not given any advice that involves you paying for anything. Um, yeah. it all involves like us saving money. Cause that's like, what yeah, my yeah. life has been. Um, but um, here's what I'll say is don't be cheap with your resources um, okay. when it comes to people. Um, yeah. And I'm really passionate about <clears throat> people. Mm -hmm. I think people deserve to be treated like equally and with respect. Absolutely. And that comes in a lot of forms. Um, yeah. And one of those is using them as resources for your business. Mm -hmm. And so like one of the things we do at Talent Stacker is I make sure that every contractor I pay yeah. makes more money working for me than they do at their day job. Um, okay. That's just like a point of emphasis is like, yep. you're gonna do side work for me. I want you to make more than you make it work because when you're thinking about the things that are burning you out yep. and the things you're sick of doing and you just don't have time for, yes. I wanna be the last thing on your list. Mm -hmm. um, so that's number one, you need people to be reliable. They're not going to be reliable for you if you're like just making the same amount of money as their day job. It's right. They're, they're, why would they be there for you? Yes. Unless you're their best friend. Yeah. Um, and, and even using the best friend card to make people be reliable for you kind of sucks too. Like that's not what you yes. should be doing either. No transactional relationships. <laughs> right. So, so business is business in my eyes and mm -hmm. I think there's been historically a horrible disconnect between employers thinking that employees serve them mm -hmm. and that they don't have to serve their employees back. Right. Um, that's what causes like toxicity at work. It's what causes mm -hmm. turnover. Um, it's what causes people to talk shit about their managers behind their back. Yep. Um, and that creates a toxic environment for the employees. Like you just get this really bad situation when you don't serve your employees. And you yeah. have to serve them if you want loyal employees. And then people are all up in arms like, oh, these white collar tech workers only stay for a year and then they're gone. And it's like, you know, that's your fault, right? Like, 
it's not a loyalty issue. It's you treat us like we're second class citizens issue. That's the problem. You're better than us because you manage us. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, um, and I've heard a lot of people like, I hate it when people call me like boss or manager, like, oh my gosh, those words, I don't like those words at all. So like, it's always just like the person above you, I prefer yeah. words like a coach or a guide um, yes. yep. or just somebody to assist you. I'm yeah. here to assist you. I'm not here right. for you to report to me. Right. I'm here to help you do your job better than you do it today. And I'm only here to help you. Um, so we have to look at it that way. Um, yep. And when you reframe it, managers get a lot better at their jobs because instead of dictating and then holding people accountable, instead, when they see a flaw, they realize there's a need and they need to help guide. And yeah. that's it. Um, yep. That's their job is to make their employees better. Um, but most people don't see it that way. So. Yep. All of that back to resources. Um, yeah. So when you're looking for resources, there's a couple of strategies here where people get kind of messed up early on. Number one, uh, use resources when you don't need them. And that's gonna sound really counterintuitive. Okay. Use resources when you mm -hmm. do not need them. Okay. So let's say you have something that you know you could do with Flow or you know you could do with Process Builder. Okay but it might make a pretty cool entry level developer task. Like, yeah, okay, you could do this with uh, an Apex class and maybe a trigger or something like that. And maybe okay. we could use like a batch job for this. Okay, yeah. I can see that. Are you over engineering the solution? Yep, 100% you are. Okay. Why? Why would yeah. you do that? Because you don't need to be out there searching for a developer that knows what they're doing when you need a developer that knows what they're doing right you need to vet the developer before you need them so this is the right. awesome situation okay. you've got a you've got a yeah. fairly complex requirement okay you know you could do it with process builder but it's pretty complex so you're like uh -huh. okay this could be code then that's when you want to say hey you know does anybody know how to you know write code and want to help out for a few hours and if this goes good i might even have you know, five, 10 hours of work a week for, I don't even know how long, you know, I've got client flow and right. you feed, and you want to feed them. And what happens is if they can, if they come in and they totally botch the job, right? Yeah. If you're, if you waited until the moment you needed them, you're yeah. screwed. Yeah. Now you've got to go talk to the client. But if it's a solution you could do yourself now, if they get it wrong, you know that you can do it. You might have to work a late night and build that flow or process builder yourself yes. and you can deliver okay. yourself. Yep. But if they come through and they do an awesome job, they get it done faster than you thought. It works better than you thought. They're more communicative than you thought. Um, <clears throat> they're more involved. They're interested in making sure it's right. They yes. tested they tested really thoroughly um, yes. when they gave you the product. It was truly finished, tested and ready. Yes. Um, they sent you a quick five minute loom video to explain how it works. You watch the video. It makes perfect sense. You test it. It works great. Now, did you have to shell out some money for something you could have done yourself? Yep, you sure do. Did you just vet a developer? And now you know that they are either someone you do not want to work with, someone who maybe needs a little guidance from you and you guys just need to get on the same page with how you communicate yeah. Yeah. or they're just amazing and you want to work with them forever. Right now, you know, and you weren't in a rock and a hard place situation. Yeah. Um, yes. So that's why I say use your resources before you need them um, okay. because you need to vet them today. Like if you think you yep. might need them tomorrow, vet them today. Okay. Um, and that's how you're going to build those relationships. And then yep. it comes down to maybe it only took them five hours. Yep. And here's what I would always say. This is, this is just what I did. You can do whatever okay. you want. Yep. But I was completely transparent with my resources. Okay. And I would say, look, here's the deal. I got paid $110 an hour yep. for this gig. Yep. That was five hours. I'm paying you $110 an hour for the yep. work you just did for me. I don't, not interested in cutting. Now you yep. may want to do that when you already have a good developer and a good what a salesperson or whatever else. Yep. And you, these are now your secondary or tertiary resources, yeah. you may want to do some cutting off the top for those people. But okay. when you're talking about the people that you need by your side when it gets tough yeah. and you need them to answer the call at 8 p.m. and help you out by, you know, work over the weekend and help you out by Monday morning, yeah, you need people by your side that they've seen your proposal, 
They saw the dollar amount. They know yep. your full transparency. They know you're paying them what you get paid. Yep. Now we have a partner sort of relationship. Sure. They know you're not cutting them. They know yep. you're not shorting them. Okay. They understand that they have your full respect. Okay. And you're not trying to make money off of them. This yep. is a true relationship that is occurring. Okay. Got um, it. And so you want to do that with your your top performers that are, you know, you're working with sure. because they're the ones you rely on. And it's such a good deal for them because they didn't have to do sales or discovery or marketing or working through them when they just, just trying to get a quote on the table. Yes. So really you paying them what you get paid yes. is, I mean, that is tremendously valuable to other people to not okay. have to go through all of that okay. pre-work. Um, yes. Yes. So a, a lot of these things don't make logical sense. And this is why I say like so many people come to the drawing board with these preconceived notions about how other businesses work or how they think business works. And they use all of these old 20, 30, 40, 50 year old business processes. Mm -hmm. And those are just not built on create to me, creating organic, true, transparent relationships with that employee employer dynamic. Yeah. And I think the more transparency you have that like we're a team, we're a company, we're working together yes. to do this mission. Yes. I'm yes. not trying I'm not earning from you. Uh, the only benefit I get is that this project gets done on time and within the budgeted hours. Okay. And that's a win for me and that's good enough. And yes. now I get a positive review from the client. I get a yes. positive review from my employee, my employee or contractor. Right. And we move forward in a very healthy way. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna help you build and scale. So Okay. I would just say, try to create situations where you hand off work um, before you need to hand off work. So the okay. next question might be, um, well, when do I, um, and, that, and I'll say uh, real quickly, that's a skill um, that I had to build was handing off work. That is not yeah. something that comes naturally to me. It is yeah. very uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, once you get comfortable with it, yeah. Um, it becomes easier. It's like anything else. Once you practice, yeah. Yeah. you get good at it. Um, yeah. and, and you can do these things. So just, so just know it will come, it will feel uncomfortable the first few times and then it will oh, come. Yeah. Um, Especially when you know the, what kind of work that you know how to do. Right. Yep. <laughs> I yep. mean, you just want to, for me, my reputation means a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that whatever, whatever has my name stamped on it, mm -hmm. that, it is what I would have delivered, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yep. And that's yeah. why you can't wait until last minute to get okay. somebody to help you out. Like okay. you want to vet it, you know, yeah. if you have something due on Friday, yeah, try to find somebody to help you out on Monday. Okay. Um, that way you have the whole week to figure it out. And that's going to suck. Like it's so stupid. Cause you know, you could have done it in four hours and been done with it. Yes. And now it's the whole like 10 hour vetting a person kind of like, yeah. yeah, it's awful. But Yes. That's the only way you're going to scale and end up in a place where you don't have to work 50 hours a week. Okay. Um, and you're all doing right. all the stuff at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think the question is now, how do you find these resources? Yeah. And how do you find people Practically to talk to? Practically speaking, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what you're going to find is your best resources are going to be people who already work for a consulting company. So okay. you can just go on LinkedIn and search these people. Okay. And you'll you'll find them out there and uh so basically just search uh like salesforce developer in okay. the uh you know and you'll find a bunch of people and they all have full-time jobs okay yep. so you don't want to go out there and look for freelancers only or independent consultants only you know like the best developers are going to have full-time jobs as developers okay um, because okay. because of all the reasons we talked about prior to this yes. healthcare and 401ks yes. and benefits yes. and all the stability and um those are all the reasons they're not jumping to do what you're doing because it doesn't feel comfortable right. so they're still incredibly qualified yes they just don't feel comfortable being independent consultants right so i would go to them okay now here's the catch yep they all have a non-compete agreement with their consulting company. If their consultancies 
Okay. If they're working for, so you might find a developer who works for like uh, just a normal company like Coca Cola. Yes. Right? Yep. And they're going to be free to come work with you on projects. Okay. Um, because that's not a, um, there's no competition between Coke and a Salesforce gig on the side. Yes. Yes. Now, if they work for a consultancy, there is competition between that company that they, their company possibly could have gotten the job for. Right. And what they're doing here. So, yep. This is the this is the line you're going to walk with that. Okay. You're going to have to do all of the work under your name. So what is that? And this works pretty well for developers okay. um, because um, if you are hiring a project manager who needs to like interface with the client, yeah, that's not going to work too well because okay. they're going to have to put their name on a meeting and, and join and all this kind of stuff. So what you want to do is if you're working for a developer. Uh, who works at a consultancy, which is going to be your easiest ones to find. Yeah. Um, they're typically going to get paid a hundred to $150,000 uh, a year. So they're going to be comfortable with you paying them a hundred dollars an hour, maybe a little bit less. Um, that's going to be comfortable. And the reason that's going to be comfortable is because even though they're worth more and I still recommend paying you paying them what you get paid, but I'm just giving you a ballpark here. Um, the reason that's going to be comfortable for them is because they're operating under a non-compete. They are not technically allowed to do the work that they're doing for you. So what do you need to do for them? You need to shield their name. That's what your job is. Your job is to shield their name so that it never gets shared. So what you have to do as an independent consultant is you create the perception that you're doing all of the work. There's no mention of a developer. There's no mention of who that person is, where they work, because now their non-compete is exposed, right? So what you're doing is you go to the developer. Hey, I've got some work on the side. I totally understand non-competes, but I've seen like where you work, some of the certifications you have. Um, I read over your LinkedIn experience, like you look like you dominate Salesforce development stuff. I've got a need. It's only going to be about five hours, but I might have a lot more work to do uh, in the future. Um, really consistently, maybe like five hours a week, if you're interested. And, you know, I'm paying, you know, I can, you know, pay a hundred dollars an hour. That's what I get paid. I'm happy to show you the proposals. Um, I'm not trying to take a cut from you. Uh, I just need some help on some development work and I'd love to establish a relationship and you do this before you need them. And then there's some back and forth, like, and you just let them know, I'm, I'm fully aware of the non-competes and how that works. I would never share your name. Um, all that I do is I cut you a 1099 at the end of the year and your name never goes down on anything. You're never, you don't have a company email address. You don't put this on your LinkedIn. Um, the client never is never going to know your name. They're never going to email you or reach out to you. I am going to handle all of the point of contact. I just need you to do five hours of development work a week and maybe I'll have more in the future. And, and that's how you establish those relationships. Okay. Um, so just read. And that's the really cool thing is like a lot of people think working with, people who are consultants is a no-go because of the non-compete. Right. It actually makes it easier for you to get them because they can't do this themselves. They okay. have to work through you if they yes. want to do a side gig and yes. you're presenting them with the opportunity An to option, do side option to do that. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so you okay. are there in to the okay. side gig economy. Okay. So it's a, it's a, there's a synergy here. It's a win-win. Yeah. Um, you get all-star developers who are senior consultants Yes. At consulting companies. Yes. And they get to make some money on the side that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, okay. yeah. There's a lot of wins in this. Like there's always Yeah. I would say there's always been a solution for every problem. You just gotta figure out who needs what in order to yes. uh, in order to make it work. Yeah. 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 And I love it when it's a win win, when mm -hmm. all parties win from it, right? That's yeah. it. Like yeah. that's the like that's the the pattern you should see here is that no one's ever getting no one's ever the loser. Like no one's ever getting taken advantage of in this situation. The client wins, they get an amazing solution. You win, you get a great name for yourself and a happy client. The consultant wins because they get to operate under their non-compete without anybody ever finding out. It's just a win across the board for everybody. And that's how business should work.